Yeah, hello everyone. We will start with uh, a training on introduction to Perl, uh, which is a programming language that's available in the market, which is one of the oldest one. So before we head start with uh, the Perl's language, we will try to see some aspects on uh, what what is all about Perl, like who wrote it, what exactly the Perl stands for, what is the meaning of uh, the Perl in the current uh, IT and we will also see what is the latest release that is going on. We will see what is the purpose of uh, having the, the language created and where it is actually used and uh, we will also see the advantages, disadvantages of using the Perl language and then we will also try to understand uh, the repositories of Perl, the CPAN and also we will uh, get to know how where exactly we will be able to find the documentation if we need some help out of uh, the language when you are using it. So please stop me wherever if you have some questions we will uh, discuss it. So what is Perl? Uh, Perl has uh, in general the current uh, acronym for the Perl is Practical Extraction and Reporting Language. This is created by Larry Wall in 1980s, uh, which is the basic version of it, and it is later uh, given to the general public uh, in 1987-88, so which is the first version of the paper. And uh, when we say Practical Extraction and Reporting Language, it is actually created uh, for uh, easier text processing and handling uh, when it when it is earlier recreated. This this language is an open source which is not under the GNU public license but still it's an open source which is uh, covered uh, under under uh, the CPAN. When we say CPAN it's a comprehensive uh, archive network which will contain all the Perl uh, information, the modules, the, uh, and the scripts, the latest updates etc is controlled and maintained in the, in that site. So we will discuss further on it. Um, so what is Perl? The Perl is one of the uh, most suitable and portable scripting language available in market. Uh, it, 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 when you start writing the code in Perl, it is more or like a human readable language. It makes it quite easy and understandable. And um, okay, moreover, it's a high level language. That means it doesn't need any compilers uh, installed specifically and compiled. It is an uh, interpreted language, so uh, at times it could be, it could be a little slower, but uh, comparatively, uh, the advantages are more. And uh, we would be using uh, the Perl for uh, automating manual tasks. Uh, we will be doing it for admin automation. Uh, we would be using it to process logs, report information. We can also implement this for uh, security checks. We can also have it uh, have extensive use of uh, Perl in bioinformatics for analysis of the DNS, etc. We can uh, use it in databases for your interacting with SQL language. Uh, we can have it for the CGI programming for the interactive forms, like creating the interactive forms. We can use it for text parsing. Uh, to analyze, uh, filter, merge, and reformat what are the, about the text that you are look, using, uh, and also we can use it on, in Telnet and SSH. We have its usability in uh, gaming and multimedia as well, and uh, we can also use it under uh, for QA test automation as well. So these are a few out of a uh, big list of uh, advantages and usability of the the Perl language. And there are few uh, feedbacks also, like uh, it is known to be a language for hackers uh, because as it can be created and implemented across, so it can it has a reason to be misused. So we need to be careful uh, you creating it. And as we said, it's most powerful and popular language. It has a nickname called uh, Swiss Army Chainsaw. Like it has all different kinds of capabilities that uh, we can expect it to do for us. And uh, it, in most of the program, program programming world, it is also known to be a duct tape. Uh, 
of the internet like it will be used when if there is any uh, issues in uh, creating libraries and to have some uh, system utilities created etc and uh, it, it has uses in DB programming as we have told like we will be writing the interacting the code for the SQL it is used in DB programming and in the current market it is used for uh, advertisement targeting and we will also do some web web uh, scraping like when we say web, web scraping we will be doing the extraction of uh, different uh, op options and putting it to one side say for example uh, if you are looking for a flight information and a code so you you uh, the when we will be writing the Perl code uh, it, it can be created in such a way that you can get uh, the the similar information from different site and captured into a certain place and that means we will be consolidating it and uh, showcasing the same and uh, uh, we can use it use the Perl Perl for our internet scripting system utilities and also ETL processing and also it is used in network programming so these are a few advantages of it and uh, uh, how to access Perl so um, before we uh, try to access well, uh, it, it, uh, we have certain websites which are created to uh, download the software that is needed. And in most of the Unix systems, it is uh, uh, default on, in the machine. So we can verify it by going to the shell and uh, running the query like uh, Perl-V which will give you the version of the Perl if it is installed in your machine and configured. So, and also if you want to try it in Mac, you can go for, go to your terminal and verify the same. And in Windows, you need to install it. Like uh, if you can, we can go to the active state uh, Perl site or the Perl.com site to again get us redirected to uh, the .msi Microsoft installer package to install the Perl software and uh, most of our uh, coding would be in we will be in general be writing it in uh, the normal text editor and we can also use some uh, integrated development environments like Eclipse, AdBeans etc that is optional like uh, if we can we can uh, we can go for it if not we have the basic test editor which we can use it for our purpose and uh, the latest version is 5.20 and if you have it installed on your machine, uh, you can either go to your command prompt in Windows or shell uh, prompt in your Unix or Linux and uh, uh, the terminal which is similar to your uh, command prompt in Mac OS and run the, the query Perl-V which will give you the, uh, the version of it. So if we are looking for, for some resources on uh, the Perl documents, uh, you can either go for uh, document published by O'Reilly and we have document written by Larry Wall and we have other uh, documents published by different uh, book vendors. So uh, on top of it we have a lot of websites which would help you in uh, understanding what exactly this language does it for, does for us. We have Perl Monks, we have uh, Perl.org, Perl.com, ActiveState Perl, uh, etc. QNTM.org. So we have good set of uh, websites which you can refer to and uh, get the information. And uh, these are the few web sources for Perl. So as we discussed, like this is a high-level uh, uh, human understandable language. When we say high-level human understandable language, that means it needs an interpreter. So when I say interpreter, uh, this is one of the software which is uh, a, a program which is created for us to uh, run the high level language uh, and uh, use it uh, I mean, to run it as per our needs. So uh, we first we need to see what is the version that we have to use. So we have Perl that hyphen to know what is the version of the Perl we will be using. And uh, it is expected for all of us to have Perl uh, version over Perl 5. So because uh, the versions before that are not no more supported and uh, it has a lot of bugs in it. So we will not be going for it. 
uh, and uh, all the Perl files are saved with .pl, .plx, .pm, .xs, .cga, etc. These are the few extensions that we can we will come across when we are trying to work with the Perl programming. And uh, as as I stated earlier, we will be doing the installer uh, either for using .msa for Windows and by default we will have be having it under Unix and Mac OS. Uh, so once before we start working on it, we will be like for example, if you want to create a basic program, uh, we will be writing uh, in the similar fashion: the shebang, high, uh, the pound and uh, exclamation with the path of your Perl and hyphen w. When I write hyphen w. That means we are trying to use warnings. So it will suggest you if there is something uh, wrong with your code that you have written. So uh, you, you are you are asking the interpreter to help you to get the warnings as well. And uh, the basic syntax would be print like this is the hello world program here. You what we look what we are looking at. So print uh, double quotes hello world and uh, the next line operator. With a semicolon, so all your programs, um, the the statement that you write, must be ending with the semicolons, and uh, we would be saving the text file with, uh, say, for example, hello.pl, uh, and if you want to run it, run it in the Unix environment, you will say change mod a plus x with your file name, and you can run the program. So we will get to know when we are trying to do it in the actual uh, uh, the Perl space. So we will try to understand what exactly it does and uh, what are its best uses before uh, we go into the actual environment. And uh, .pl is an extension and uh, also the first line that you see that it will tell you where you can find the, the Perl program installed. And uh, that are dot hyphen w that we have discussed. It's a warning. It will give you about all the warnings. So before we go to the numeral numerical literals, we have three different types of variables in your Perl programming. One is scalars, another is arrays, and another is hashes. So scalars are those which are created. I mean, which will be saving the uh, all the information and it. It doesn't have a difference between int and float, so all all basic uh, string integers and all those information are saved under scalars. And we have two other types called uh, hashes and arrays. Those arrays would be saving your uh, information of the strings, and the scalars would be uh, saving the indexed version of your strings. So we will discuss on them. Uh, so your scalars, when I say scalars, it can contain an undefined value or a null value, and uh, it doesn't have any difference with your uh, integer or float. So I I assume that we have a little information on uh, all the different type data types, say like int, float, string, scars, etc. So with the assumption, I will be proceeding further. Uh, so uh, we can we use the scalars to reference another variable also, uh, and when I am trying to understand the numerical literals, so these are the following uh, definitions that are available and can be used in Perl. So we can use uh, single integer called integers. We can use the floating point values. We have scientific notations uh, like one e uh, exponential values, and we have uh, six and uh, 6.4e power 33 etc i mean this will, these are the scientific notation and also if you are using a long uh, long numbers you can use it use underscore rather than num uh, and all the string literals uh, are in your double quotes so if you are using a single quote uh, all the escape characters are considered as considered as strings only so we need to be careful using the Single quotes. So I mean, uh, the statements above are the few quotes given by Lariva, like uh, real programmers can write assembly in uh, any language, and also we have a quote saying that uh, la laziness uh, is one virtue which is being used by him. 
and we have some other codes like uh, things can be done easy, easy things can be done and the hard things can be made possible so these are few codes given by and uh, for us to understand we have used like double codes here to represent how we are going to use the strings in our uh, Perl language and uh, these are the variables that we have discussed earlier all the variables are all the scalar variables are represented using a dollar dollar sign before the name variable name and we have array variables which starts with an at the rate at the rate symbol with the uh, array name and also hash variables the hash variables start with a percentile and the hash variable name and uh, we also have some file handlers like stdin for uh, taking input from your keyboard std out std error for the uh, getting the error values etc and one good thing with Perl is we, we need not to declare any variables and uh, the, the definition as I stated earlier the definition of your scalar value is determined by department when uh, we start using it say for example if I write dollar uh, a is equal to 5 then it is considered as an integer and if I use the same uh, 5 within a single quotes then it is considered to be a string in string character so we have the system interprets based on the operator that we use so for example if I have dollar uh, a is equal to 5 and dollar b is equal to uh, 6 uh, then if I write uh, the addition of dollar a plus dollar b then it would be 5 plus 6 is equal to 11 and say for example uh, if I have a dollar a is equal to 5 and dollar b is equal to single quotes 6 then the outcome of a plus b would be 5 6 so it will be interpreting it as a string so we need to be careful in how we are representing the information so uh, uh, the summar summarizing it is the scalar variables cannot determine uh, the, I mean, it cannot differ differ between a number and a string, but the, our interpreter helps us in getting it to understand. And we have different set of operators uh, uh, with the Perl language. We have numeric and logical operators. We have string operators. We have uh, list operators, parentheses, braces, quotes, and we have the arrays and hashes that we have seen earlier. Uh, we have increment and decrement operators, we have unary, arithmetic, bit operators, logical operators, etc. So like all the, when, I, when we represent as a typical, we have that the arithmetic operators like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modular, and we have increment, decrement operators of uh, plus, plus, minus, minus, and we have uh, other like the plus, equals minus equals and uh, multiplication equals and uh, divisional equals and we have logical R and logical and etc and uh, we have another uh, operator with uh, two uh, star, star signs which is for uh, exponenti exponentiation we will look at it and uh, we can also have string operators for your concatenation those we will be doing it using a dot operator uh, okay, so for example, here we have dollar first name is equal to Larry, and dollar last name is equal to Al. So if you want to do a string concatenation, we will say dollar full name is equal to dollar first name dot, and uh, you want to use a white space, then you will give a double quote space, and again give dot dollar last name with a semicolon. Uh, so we have to end every statement with a semicolon. The, we will be getting the output and uh, say for example uh, you want to work with the equality operators uh, so for uh, like here we have an example which states dollar language is equal to Perl and uh, if I say double equals if I use a single equals then it is like assignment to your variable the information that is present on your right hand side would be assigning assign it to your variable on your left side so and and if I use a double equals that means it is comparing 
uh, we would be comparing the information on your left hand side with your right hand side. So we need to be very careful in using the operators. So if you are trying to do an assignment, make use of a single equals. And if you want to uh, use uh, verify the equality and inequality, we can use EQ or NE uh, for validating it. Uh, it would be easy to use it in uh, per language. And we have the relationship operators, uh, uh, the greater than, greater than or equals, uh, less than, less than or equal to. So we will try to write an example and see how we are going to represent it and use it for our uh, programming. And we have few uh, string functions like if you are trying to convert it to the upper case. So to your variable, if you use uh, uc uh, with the variable value, then it will convert it to the upper case. And if you want to convert only first character of your uh, st the word, then you will use uc first. Similarly, for the lower case, uh, here we have an example. Like it says, uh, I have variable one whose name is Larry. I have variable two whose name is Moe, and I have variable three, etc. So if I use uh, dollar uh, variable one is equal to uh, uc first of uh, variable one then it will give me output as capital L uh, Larry. Similarly, if I use UC uh, variable 2, then it will give me all caps MOE. So here is the representation of our program. So when I say print UC first variable 1, then it will print a capital L A R R Y. And similarly, UC uh, variable 2, it will give me all the, ca all the letters in your word as the capital, capital letters. And similarly, if I use print lowercase first, then uh, lowercase first of uppercase of all the values, then it will give me a small s letter and hemp as the caps one. So we can use them as per our need. And also we have a variable interpolation. So this is one uh, area where you extensively use your uh, per language, so we need to understand whether how better we are using our quotes, single quotes or double quotes, etc. So, for example, if I has have a variable name called Stooge equal to Larry, so when I say uh, double quotes dollar Stooge is one of the three Stooges, then it will try to replace the variable name with the value that we have assigned. That so it will. Uh, give you an output saying that Larry is one of the Stooges. So similarly, if I use a single quote here, it will not interpret nor it will uh, uh, replace your escape character to a new line. It will simply take all the string information and give you as an output. So if you see the when I say print single quotes, the same statement with the backslash n, then the output would be uh, same thing, the, the variable name and the statement with the backslash n. So it will not do any interpretation of your variable and replace it with your value. So we need to make sure whenever you are writing your code, you are using the double quotes and single quotes to uh, as per our need. And we have few uh, escape characters like slash n for your new line, slash t for tab, slash r for carriage return, and we have slash a for b similar we have the similar escape characters from c language so there as as such we know like perl is a mix and match of uh, different languages like it's output of them so we can see some uh, similarities with the other language so when i say uh, print hello and backslash n it will print and it will give a uh, the cursor to the next line and uh, when we try to understand that the numbers and strings uh, declared in a scalar variable, it will uh, it will take uh, as as you have represented it. So uh, as we stated the earlier example to of a single quotes and double quotes here uh, uh, in this example, if you are having a variable with a value uh, as a number and you are trying to add it to another number, it will take it as uh, integer value and sum it up. And if you are trying to use it, uh, like though you presented the value as a string, 
Perl can still interpret it and as such like you are doing the operation based on the operation that you are performing it will take the value say for example I have uh, here like a, the dollar be a variable is assigned with value 50 with double quotes so as we learned earlier like double quote representation is for the string but when you are trying to execute it say print variable name minus 10 that means uh, the Perl interpreter will consider that value as an integer and will give you a value of 40. So if I use the single quotes here, then it will say 50 minus 40, 9 minus 10. So we need to be careful of that. Uh, it will be giving you a warning there. And uh, before, before we get here uh, to all the loops and conditions, uh, we have different set of, uh, as we have learned about different set of operators like uh, the list of operators, uh, the mathematic, unary, increment, decrement, etc. Uh, we will also be having some programming uh, statements for us like uh, the control structures, the loops and conditions uh, for us to uh, use it effectively. Uh, so here, uh, be, even before going to the control structures, uh, we have uh, some case statements like if, else, if, etc. and uh, the condition statements of while. while. So uh, here is an example for your if else statement. So if you observe, like uh, you will say if uh, like your variable equals to rain, we have used eq, not uh, double equals. So uh, and your if the statement is true then it will go into your uh, code block and it will say print umbrella else if you you observe here like it will it is not else if it is ELS if so this is one uh, difference between the other languages ELS if and you will be verifying a different uh, condition so if the condition is satisfied it will go to that block of code else it will give you the final statement this is the nested statement that we are representing to understand all different um, representation of your uh, condition statement and we have another uh, thing called unless unless else so for example here I have you have unless and you variable equals to the in uh, it, it will look, look for that statement and say it will print the as you wish else it will say print umbrella so uh, in both your if else if else and unless else you are supposed to use your uh, uh, the flower braces to represent your block block of code and uh, this is conditional so this is your while loop which is a conditional uh, loop statement wherein uh, say if you have variable of i is equal to 0 and uh, until you have your condition satisfied like i less than or equal to 1000 it will keep on printing your uh, uh, the value of i and you have an increment operator there here we need to be having another brace so, so as to close the block of code so we have another function called until loop so until loop is like uh, it will evaluate the expression expression repeatedly until the condition is met. So it will say until you have the value equals to 1000, it will keep on doing the action continuously. So these are few additional uh, uh, features that Perl has compared to the other uh, programming language, the until uh, and you have the unless. And we have for loop. Uh, for loops uh, is similar to your C language wherein you have your uh, uh, instantiation, you have the condition and the, increment, uh, the incremental or decremental operation there. And un so until you have your condition satisfied, it will keep, uh, execute, keep on executing your uh, block of code. You have another representation like say here for uh, the variable name. 0 uh, dot, 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 thousand. That means it will keep on incrementing till that value with an increment of 1 and it will do the, the blo block of code execution. So uh, one complex uh, program that we have here which will say 
uh, we, where we use your loop and your conditional statement. Say you have the for i is equal to zero, i i is equal i less than ten, i plus plus. In that again, if your uh, i is equals to one or i is equal to three, then you will go to the next. That way, like it is similar to we have the break, uh, break, continue, etc. In your uh, other programming languages, next is the one which we use it here. It, when I use the next in your record block, it will say ignore the current iteration. It will come out of it. And similar to your break, you have the last here. The last means it will come out of your uh, loop. We will try to execute it when we install and run the Perl program. So we have certain exercises here. We will go through them. And arrays, as I stated earlier, arrays. We will uh, have a little brief on arrays, and we will end the session. Arrays and hash variables. So arrays are those um, list of scalars indexed by an integer. Say if I have a representation of array at the rate array is equal to uh, a string, a set of strings. That means my first letter array. Larry would be an uh, index of zero, and index of one would be curly, and similarly index of two would be more. And if you want to use the whole array and access it, then you will simply say at the rate array, it will uh, give you all the information out. Uh, for, and also when you are writing your code, uh, you will be introduced with a new uh, keyword called my. So when I use the my uh, at the rate array and uh, give the values for it. Then your my keyword will have have a declared is a declared variable which has uh, the scope until end of the block only. So we need to, when you are writing your code and you want to be strict with your code, then you can use the my keyword for the, your purpose. And also if you want to print only few letters of it, so you will you can say print array of index of zero. It will give you the first one. And then, if you want to print, say for example, if I say print array minus one, then it will do uh, the execution from the last. It will give you moi. And for example, if I don't give anything, then uh, if I go beyond that, it will throw me a warning here. And uh, if you want to find the array size, then you can use uh, array size. Array underscore size is equal to at the rate array. It will uh, give you the value of the array size. Uh, and you can uh, print it if we if we need it to value validate and also based on the information that you are having it in your arrays you can also do the sorting of it say there are two ways like default sort would be it will do a, st a string comparison it and give you the the list which is sorted out and you have another called user sub this will give you a, it will create your own subroutine that will returns an integer value which is less than or greater than to zero say for example it is the representation would be less than equal to greater than so when i use this com, use this com operator it will uh, compare the subroutines easily and uh, the information is sorted so I will I will stop the session here and we will discuss further on all the arrays, uh, the string, string sorting, and uh, we have other uh, setups like for each, and we have uh, array manipulation splits, we have hashes, we have uh, the multi-dimensional arrays, we have references and nested data structures, we have lists in it, and we can also discuss on uh, uh, different practical examples and utilizations of array uh, in the next sessions. Uh, can we end the session here, please?